Hey, this is Terratoots with a quick intro to using PBR materials in Terragen. PBR, or Physically Based Rendering, is a shading technique that's gained a lot of popularity in recent years, and many 3D objects come with PBR image maps. PBR materials were difficult to work with in previous versions of Terragen, but more recent versions have streamlined the workflow significantly. I'm using version 4.6 here. Let's take a look at how this works. We'll come into this mountain overlook scene, where I've imported a tower object I downloaded from RenderCrate. You'll notice right off it has no textures. This is a common situation in Terrigen. Often object textures don't import automatically and have to be manually assigned. Opening up the folder my object came in, we can see that it has some of the common PBR image maps, indicating that this is in fact a PBR texture. So let's take a look at where to put these images. We'll open up our tower object by clicking the plus button here, and then go one more layer in into the parts shader. In this case, the whole object is just one part, but sometimes there will be multiple parts here and you'll need to repeat this process for each one. So PBR materials in Terrigen are implemented through the kind of confusingly named default shader. And you'll see that we already have one here inside of our object. Let's open it up. You'll see the default shader has many slots for different images. And for the most part, you just need to figure out which slot to use for each image that came with your object. We'll start with color, so click on color image. It's important to note that there are two major PBR versions, metalness and specular. Terrigen is set up to use the metalness workflow, which means that we'll want to choose the base color map here instead of diffuse, and later we'll use the metallic map instead of the specular map. Sometimes you'll only have one color image, called diffuse or sometimes albedo. In that case, use what you have. Next, we'll come over to the roughness tab and choose our roughness image. If you have a gloss or glossiness image instead, you can choose to use that. Just check the gloss map box here. Next, in the specular tab, we'll choose our metallic map. And we're going to want to set the metalness slider to 1, which will fully activate metalness in the region defined by the map. Next, let's come over to the displacement tab. Terrigen doesn't use normal maps, but it does use displacement maps to give extra detail to object surfaces. If your object only comes with a normal map, there are programs you can use to convert it to a displacement map, which is what I've done here. The displacement multiplier is going to give the height of the displacement in meters. Let's set this to 0.1. That's all for this tower. But let's quickly talk about other types of images you might find included with your object. Plants will often come with opacity, transparency, or alpha maps that you can use here in the opacity tab. Plants also sometimes come with translucency maps you can use in the color tab. If your object has glowing parts or an emissivity map, you can sometimes use the luminosity image here. Terrigen doesn't have a specific slot for ambient occlusion maps, but you can experiment with loading those through a separate image shader and using them as a color function to give more shadow to crevices and cracks in your object. One thing to keep in mind is that all of these image slots have a slider next to them. The image is multiplied by the output of the slider, so you can use these to adjust, for example, color brightness or the amount of translucency. Finally, Remember that the default shader isn't limited just to objects. If you find a PBR texture you like, you can add a default shader anywhere in your scene and use it. With that, let's render our castle. And that's looking much better. Have fun texturing.